Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to show you how the balance sheet, income statement, and statement of cash flows are connected. This is the fourth video in this series. I created a fictitious company called Slippers Beyond Retail, and I'm going to show you how each transaction affects the financials, and then at the end of each calendar year. We're going to look at the numbers to see if it's a good investment or not. When you understand the financials, not only is it easier to value a company, but you learn so much more about that company and that industry. What we do is design slippers and sell them to retail stores. So the first thing you do when you start a business is you have to fund it with cash. This is a private business to start. So we're going to fund it out of our pockets. We add $5 million of cash to the business. So let's increase cash 5 million. Cash is an asset on the balance sheet and assets have to always equal liabilities plus equity. We can't put 5 million in liabilities because we do not owe anybody anything. We have to put it into the equity section as owner's equity. When we IPO in 2022, we have to change this word to stockholders equity. Since it's a private business, it says owner's equity. Now we need some inventory. There's a company called Slippy and we buy $1 million of generic slippers. So we wire this company a million dollars. So let's remove 1 million from cash. And we add 1 million to inventory. Every transaction has to be added to at least two places. And the reason we do this is because the balance sheet has to always balance. In this particular instance, both inputs were contained in the asset section. We increase one asset, inventory, and we decrease another asset, cash. So our balance sheet balances. We take these generic slippers and make them really nice so we could sell them to retail stores. Walmart calls us and says, I'll take your entire inventory. And we tell them the cost is $2 million. Walmart says, send us the shipment. Once we receive it and review it, then we'll send you a check for $2 million. So let's remove 1 million from inventory and we add 1 million to cost of revenue because that's how much it cost us to generate the $2 million of revenue. You see reconciliation is off by negative 1 million. That's how much net income is. At the end of the year, we need to zero out the income statement and transfer that over to retain earnings. So we currently balance because we know this net income number belongs in retain earnings. Walmart receives a shipment, says everything looks good, mails us a check for $2 million. Our cash goes up $2 million. And we add $2 million to revenue. We have 10 employees that design the slippers. They receive $50,000 each, so their entire salary goes in the cost of revenue. So that's $500,000 in cost of revenue. And we minus $500,000 from cash. Our taxes are 20% of our profits. So 20% of $500,000 is $100,000. So we have to send a check to the IRS for $100,000. We have to minus that $100,000 from cash. Our income statement is complete for 2020. Let's do our statement of cash flows. There are three parts to the statement of cash flows. Cash flow from operations, cash flow from investing, and cash flow from financing. Let's start with cash flow from operations. The first entry is net income. So we'll add 400,000. And then we have to add back the non-cash items on the income statement. There are not any non-cash items. Then we have to adjust for changes in working capital. There are no changes in working capital. So we're done with the cash flow from operations section. We did not have anything from cash flow from investing. We didn't buy any equipment or acquire any companies. And cash flow from financing, we did add $5 million. That was our deposit to start the business. All our financial statements are complete. Let's reconcile cash. On January 1st, 2020, we had no cash because we just started the business. On 12 31, 2020, we have 5.4 million of cash. So our cash balance went up 5.4 million. We want to make sure that equals a change in cash. Change in cash is a sum of cash flow from operations, cash flow from investing, and cash flow from financing. 
Let's pretend we're an investor looking at this company. We look at the income statement. We see they have 400,000 of profit. That's great. We look at their free cash flow. We see 400,000 of free cash flow. Free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. There were no CapEx. So it looks like the company did well in their first year. They generated $400,000 of profit and they had $400,000 of cash flow. Now we need to zero out the statement of cash flows and the income statement so we can start 2021. We need to move the 400,000 of net income to retain earnings. And we need to zero out everything. The financials for 2021 will look like this on January 1st. 5.4 million of assets, 5.4 million of equity. Now let's input the transactions for 2021. So the financials look identical to the end of 2020. Let's add 5.4 million to our cash on 1-1-2021. Since we have no inventory, we need to buy some. So we buy 5 million of slippers from Slippy. We wire him $5 million, he sends us 5 million of slippers. So let's add 5 million to inventory. And we'll minus 5 million from cash. So we're still reconciled because we increase one asset and we decrease one asset. Walmart once again wants all our inventory. So we zero out inventory and we add that to cost of revenue because that's how much it cost us to generate the revenue, $5 million of inventory. We charge Walmart $10 million for our inventory because that's how we make money. We make the slippers look nice and then we charge a markup. So we'll add 10 million to revenue. Walmart says, we'll give you $5 million, but can we pay you 5 million in the future? So we feel pretty comfortable with this. So we extend 5 million of credit to Walmart. So we add 5 million of cash. And we add 5 million to accounts receivables. Our balance sheet is off 5 million, which is our net income. So it does reconcile because we know at the end of the accounting period, we transfer net income to retain earnings. Since our business is growing, we decide to buy a slipper making machine so we could design slippers faster. There's a company called Tony's Machines and they sell us a machine for $1 million. So we send a wire to Tony for $1 million. We minus cash 1 million. And we add 1 million of property, plant, and equipment. That's a non-current asset on the balance sheet. There's current assets, which are cash, accounts, receivables, and inventory. Current assets are assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. You may be wondering, why didn't we put the entire $1 million expense onto the income statement? Why do we put it on the balance sheet? because we have to depreciate a non-current asset over its useful life. And the useful life for this machine is five years. So we pass through a $200,000 expense onto the income statement for the next five years. So this year, we put $200,000 onto the income statement as depreciation, which is an expense that brings down our net income. So now the value of the machine on our balance sheet is $800,000, not 1 million. So we add $200,000 to accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account, meaning it acts the opposite of a regular asset. A contra asset reduces our asset balance. So that $200,000 reduces our assets. We have 10.2 million of assets, and that equals our cash, plus our accounts receivables, plus our property, plant, and equipment, minus accumulated depreciation. You would see that the original value of the asset was 1 million, and we depreciated $200,000 of that asset. So the book value is $800,000. If we just put $800,000 onto the balance sheet, then an investor would not know is the original cost of the asset $800,000 or is it more like a million or two million? This gives us a lot more information. We have 10 employees. We pay them $50,000 each. They design the slippers so their entire salary goes in the cost of revenue. We have to minus $500,000 from cash. Now let's calculate our taxes. 
we pay 20% of our operating profit. So that's 860,000 of taxes. We send a check to the IRS for 860,000. So we have to minus cash. Now let's populate our statement of cash flows. The top part is cash flow from operations. And that starts with net income. And the purpose of cash flow from operations is we convert net income into cash. Since depreciation is a non-cash item, we have to add it back on the statement of cash flows. Because depreciation brought down our net income and it's a non-cash item. This year and for the next four years, we'll pass through a $200,000 depreciation expense onto the income statement. But we account for the entire $1 million machine in the first year we buy it. I'll show you that in a little bit when we get to the cash flow from investing section. Now we have to adjust for changes in working capital. On January 1st, 2021, our accounts receivables was zero. Now it's five million. When accounts receivables goes up, cash goes down. So we minus five million in the cash flow from operations section. Because when we extend credit, that's a negative for cash. When Walmart pays the five million in accounts receivables, then it'll be a cash inflow in that accounting period. In our cash flow from operations section, it was a negative 1.4 million. Now let's do cash flow from investing. We did buy that machine for $1 million. So we minus 1 million from CapEx. The entire $1 million for this machine was captured in 2021. That's why we add back $200,000 each year. So we're not double counting. Nothing happened in 2021 in cash flow from financing, so we can leave that zero. Let's reconcile our cash. We already input the cash balance on 1-1. Let's input the cash balance on 12-31. It's 3,040,000. In 2021, our cash balance went down $2.36 million, which equals our change in cash. Our change in cash equals CFO, plus CFI, plus CFF. So that reconciles. Let's pretend we're an investor. We see the company had an accounting profit of $3.44 million. That's good. Then we look at the free cash flow and it's negative 2.4 million. And we start to scratch our head. Why did they lose so much cash when they reported so much profit? And we see the main reason was the company extended 5 million of credit to Walmart. So they did not receive 5 million of cash. So at least we understand why they had negative free cash flow with an accounting profit. And we're not too concerned because Walmart is a pretty low credit risk. Now let's close out 2021. We transfer over net income to retain earnings. So we add 3,440,000. Now we're reconciled on our balance sheet and we zero out everything on the income statement and we zero out everything on a statement of cash flows. Our financial statements for 2022 will start off looking exactly like this. Let's start entering the transactions for 2022. First, let's add the cash balance as of 1-1. That's 3.04 million. The first thing that happens in 2022, Walmart pays us $5 million from last year because we extended credit to them. So we increase cash 5 million. And then we decrease accounts receivables. So everything was contained within the asset section. Next, we buy 10 million of inventory from Slippy, but on credit, we don't pay him cash. We need to increase inventory 10 million and increase accounts payable 10 million. We increased assets 10 million and increased liabilities 10 million. So our balance sheet still balances. Once again, Walmart wants our entire inventory of $10 million and they're going to pay us $20 million. We're going to move the $10 million of inventory off the balance sheet and onto the income statement as cost of revenue. We still reconcile because net income is negative $10 million and that belongs in retain earnings and that would reconcile the balance sheet. Walmart owes us $20 million, so they're going to give us $10 million in cash, and the other $10 million will be on credit. So we'll increase revenue $20 million, and increase cash $10 million, and then increase accounts receivables $10 million. Every year we depreciate this machine $200,000, so we'll add $200,000 to depreciation, 
and we'll increase accumulated depreciation. And that's gonna reduce our asset balance $200,000. So the book value of this machine is $600,000 according to our balance sheet. Now we're gonna IPO, we're gonna be a public company. So we're gonna sell 10 million shares for $5 each, that's $50 million. So we receive $50 million, we'll increase our cash. That 50 million belongs in our equity section. And each share of stock is assigned a par value. It's an arbitrary number just to keep track of the shares outstanding. A common par value is one penny. If all 10 million shares have a par value of one penny, 10 million times one penny equals $100,000. So common stock is $100,000. Additional paid in capital is $50 million, the amount we received from selling our stock minus the common stock. So it's 49,900,000. When you see in the equity section stock or common stock, this is not the value of the shares of stock. Like I said, it's just an arbitrary value to keep track of the shares. Some companies use a par value of one one hundredth of a cent. Other companies may use a dollar. Now that we IPO'd, it says stockholders equity because the stockholders own the company. It doesn't say owner's equity. And we added five employees. We have 15 employees at $50,000 each. So our payroll is 750,000. So we add that to cost of revenue, 750,000. And we minus that from cash. Since we're getting busier, we hired an HR person and we're paying them $70,000 a year. So we minus 70,000 from cash. Their salary goes into SG&A, selling, general, and administrative. Their salary does not go into cost of revenue. Employees in support functions like HR, marketing, IT are not part of cost of revenue. So we add 70,000 here. Our taxes are 20% of our operating profit. That's how much money we're gonna to send to the IRS. We'll minus that from cash. When a company IPOs, there's usually fees paid to an investment bank. It would be too confusing if I included every single detail. I just wanna give you the idea of how this works. And most companies do not pay the amount of taxes on the income statement. The taxes on the income statement are the taxes according to GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles and the company pays taxes according to the IRS. To make it less confusing, I had them pay the same amount of taxes as the income statement says. But in a future video, I'm gonna add deferred tax assets or deferred tax liabilities to show you how that works. We're done with all the transactions from 2022. Now let's populate our statement of cash flows. To calculate cash flow from operations, we start with our net income. And then we have to add back the non-cash items. We add back depreciation of 200,000. Accounts receivables at the end of 2021 was 5 million. At the end of this year, it's 10 million. So accounts receivables went up 5 million. When accounts receivables goes up, cash goes down. So that's a negative 5 million. We bought 10 million of product on credit. Our accounts payable went up 10 million in 2022. When we use accounts payable, that's like a cash inflow. Because when you use accounts payable, it's the same thing as taking a loan, but instead of receiving cash, you're receiving merchandise. And you're not paying cash for that. You will in the future, but in this reporting period, you're not. When we do pay for the accounts payable next year, then it'll be a cash outflow. Our operating cash flow is 12.384 million. There's nothing in our investing cash flow. In the financing section, we have to add 50 million for the common stock. Because the statement of cash flows is tracking all cash. Anytime cash is affected, it has to show up in the statement of cash flows. Let's reconcile our cash. The cash at the end of 2022 is 65.4 million. Our cash increased 62.4 million in 2022, our change in cash matches that, so we're reconciled. If I was an analyst looking at this company, I would see net income of 7.2 million 
and free cash flow of 12.4 million. So I'd wonder why is their free cash flow so much higher than their net income? And remember, free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus CapEx. There's no CapEx. So I would see the main reason is they took on a lot of credit, 10 million in accounts payable. So I know this is a temporary difference. When they pay the 10 million next year, then free cash flow will be a lot lower. If you're just tracking cash, it's really impressive they went from 3 million to 65 million, but it's really because they issued all that common stock. If a company's cash went up from 3 million to 65 million because they sold a ton of products, that's pretty amazing. But it went up because they issued equity. That's neither good or bad. I consider equity raises and debt raises same thing when a company pays down debt or pays down equity. I consider it neutral because one number goes up, another number goes down. When a company buys back common stock, which we may do in a future video, their cash goes down because they have to use cash to buy it. Same thing when a company pays down its debt. Even though their debt goes down, their cash goes down. So I consider it a neutral event. Let's now zero out our income statement. So we'll move this 7.184 million to retain earnings. Now the balance sheet is balanced and we'll zero out the income statement and statement of cash flows. On the first day of 2023, this is what the financial statements will look like. Let's start entering the transactions for 2023. Let's add the cash balance as of 1-1. So we're starting off the year with 65, 424. The first transaction is we're going to receive $10 million from Walmart from last year. So they're paying off their accounts receivables. We'll zero out accounts receivables and then add $10 million of cash. We're going to pay $10 million to Slippy for the accounts payable from last year. So we zero out accounts payable and we decrease cash $10 million. Now we're going to buy $30 million of inventory all on credit. So we're we'll add 30 million to inventory and 30 million to accounts payable. Walmart doesn't want all our inventory. They just want 20 million of our 30 million. So we'll remove 20 million from inventory. We'll put that onto the income statement as cost of revenue. Walmart owes us $40 million. So they're going to give us 20 million of cash now and 20 million next year. We'll increase accounts receivables 20 million and we'll increase cash 20 million. And we have to book the entire revenue. It is possible we can have 40 million of revenue but receive no cash because it's all on credit. That would make your net income look good and your cash flow look bad. Let's pay our employees. We have 15 employees at $50,000 each. So we add 750,000 to cost of revenue. And we minus 750,000 from, from cash. We raise the salary of our HR employee to $90,000. So we'll remove 90,000 from cash and put 90,000 in SGNA. The slipper making machine we have is an old model. It's actually worth nothing in the open market because the new model works five times as well and it's half the price. We need to accurately reflect the assets on our balance sheet. In the beginning of the year, our balance sheet indicates the machine is worth $600,000, which means if we liquidated the company today, we can get $600,000 for the machine, which is incorrect because the value is zero. So we're gonna remove the entire $600,000 off the balance sheet and pass through an asset impairment. An asset impairment brings down our net income. Now let's calculate our taxes for the year. We pay 20%, but we're going to pay 20% on our operating profit. Because even though an asset impairment brings down our net income, it doesn't benefit us tax wise. So we have to exclude that from our tax calculation. Our taxes are 3,832,000. So we'll minus that from our cash balance because we have to send the check to the IRS for that amount. Now let's populate our statement of cash flows. Let's start with cash flow from operations. It starts with net income, 14,728. Now we have to add back the non-cash items on the income statement. Because remember, we wanna convert net income to cash. 
So since an asset impairment reduces our net income, we add it back here. If a non-cash item increases our net income, we would have to minus that out here. Our inventory increased 10 million in 2023. When inventory goes up, cash goes down. So we minus 10 million in the operating cash flow section. Our accounts payable went up 20 million. They were 10 million on the first day of the year. Now they're 30 million. When accounts payable goes up, cash goes up. So we add 20 million. Our accounts receivables went from 10 million to 20 million. So they went up 10 million. When accounts receivables goes up, cash goes down. So we minus 10 million. Since things are going well, we want to acquire another company. So we acquire Sandals Beyond Retail and we pay them $5 million for their business. And we consolidate everything on their balance sheet onto ours. First, we have to minus 5 million from cash because we had to send them that cash. That company only has two things on their balance sheet, $4 million of inventory and $1 million of accounts payable. So they ship us their inventory, we put it into our warehouse, and we add $4 million to our inventory number. And we add $1 million to our accounts payable. We're taking on their debt. We gave them $5 million, but they just gave us $3 million of net assets. Net assets are assets minus liabilities. 4 million of inventory minus 1 million of liabilities. So that means we paid $2 million above their net assets. So we add 2 million to Goodwill. Goodwill is a plug to make the balance sheet balance. It's a meaningless asset, but it needs to be there so the numbers equal. Let's reconcile our cash. Our cash at the end of 1231 was 75,752. Our cash balance increased in 2023, 10,328,000, which matches a change in cash on the statement of cash flows. Remember, change in cash is CFO plus CFI plus CFF. Now let's pretend we're an analyst looking at the numbers. So in 2023, their net income was 14.7 million and their free cash flow was 15.3 million. The reason free cash flow is $600,000 more than net income was the asset impairment. That asset impairment brought down our net income, but we have to add it back here on the statement of cash flows. Leave a comment if you have ideas of what I should do in part five of this series. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.